Today we are going to talk about how to cut more firewood. I'm going to show you nothing but wood and piles of wood and stacks of wood while I talk about it. So what I'm going to talk about basically is how that I can cut as much wood as I do without any equipment basically. Um, all the wood you're going to be seeing on this video is wood that I currently have in the wood yard. Wood that is either ready to be sold or it is drying to be sold for next fall, next winter, or wood that I'm working on to get ready for next fall, next winter. And um, I cut about 600 face cords a year, which is about 200 full cords. I don't have a tractor. All I have is a few chainsaws, a splitter, a trailer, and a truck. And that's it. Um, I'm going to talk about how to be efficient with what I have and what I do. Um, number one thing I get asked is how do I cut so much wood without equipment? Well, I'm not afraid of work. I actually like to work. One of the main reasons I started cutting wood was for exercise and maybe to make an extra dollar or two, maybe even three. But I do like to actually work and get physical exercise. When I first started, I was just planning on maybe cutting two or three days a week for a few hours and getting some exercise and then selling a little bit of wood. But now it has turned into where I try to work on the wood at least once each day, sometimes all day. Once in a while I skip a day. Some, day, some days I'll only work two, three, four hours. But I try to get in you know, a good five, six hours a day if I can. So the number one thing you got to do is focus on one task at a time and do nothing else. A lot of people think that the way to be efficient is, is to cut the wood and then as you're cutting it then split it and then stack it right away. Yeah, if you're just doing a little bit you could do that. But when you want to do volume, I do one thing at a time. I will cut for six seven, eight, nine hours steady and just throw rounds into a pile. And then once I get that job done, then I get the splitter out and then I'll split for five, six, seven, eight, nine hours steady and get that job done. And then once I get all my pile, all my wood cut and all my piles of rounds cut up and split up, then I stack over and over and over until I get big huge stacks. So I do one thing at a time. I'm not moving equipment in, moving it around, moving the logs around, taking it from one place to another. I have my logs placed right where I'm going to cut it, right where I'm going to stack it, right where I'm going to split it, all in one place. It just is more efficient that way. Instead of using equipment to move the wood around, I just work on it right in one spot. So focus on one thing at a time and work on it. Um, so that's what I do. Also, consistency show up every day. I do a lot or I do a little, but I try to get as much done as I can each day with the time that I have. If you've ever heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant? Well, you, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So that's what I do. Some days I eat a lot, some days I eat a little, but I try to get as much done as I can each day. I also set goals and I shoot high. A lot of times I don't reach my goals, but it's better to have a high goal and not reach it, then have a low goal and always reach it. Because you're always going to be striving to do more each day. So that's what I try to do. I try to actually put in front of myself more than I probably can do. I try to have a, you know, have my eyes bigger than my plate, so to speak. Um, so that's what I do. Also, when you set goals, you got to have it planned out. You got to be ready. Um, you got to have your saws ready. You got to have them sharp. You got to have your gas. You got to have your oil. You got to have your equipment. Um, you got to plan to have the wood there to work on. You can't just show up and think, well, I'm here. Now I got to find some wood to cut. But I'm constantly planning out how I'm going to do it. Uh, the next thing is you got to get your mind right. You got to, you can't look at it as like, wow, that looks like a lot of work. Because right there, you're defeating yourself. I look at it as like, how much could I get done today? Or I look at it as, well, I'm just going to start cutting. We'll see how far I get. Or I'm just going to start stacking, and I'm going to try to get three full cords stacked today. Or four full, full cords stacked. Sometimes I do more. Sometimes I do less. But I, I get my mind right in the fact that I want to put
push myself to see how much I can get done in a day instead of trying to watch the clock like a lot of people do on their jobs or thinking about, you know, well, I'll do what I feel like doing. Well, wood doesn't care what you feel like. What matters is how much you get done. A lot of days I don't feel like stacking all day long, but it has to get done, so that's what I do. So it's just like anything else that you do that's hard, like running a marathon. You do it one step at a time. And if you were to look at it like, well, that's a long ways to go, well, just run to the corner, then you run to the next corner. Then you run the straight stretch, then you run around the lock again. You just keep moving or climbing a mountain. It's one step at a time. So you just keep working at it, and that's what I do. I just try to always be accomplishing, and I try to always be moving forward so that I'm not, you know, worried about, um, you know, when I'm going to be done. You can't be a person that's watching the clock. Um, the only time I ever watch the clock is to see if I can beat the clock, to see if I can get a particular job done by a certain time. I'm racing the clock, but I'm not looking at the clock thinking, well... I'll work 10 more minutes and I'll quit. I'm always looking to myself and saying, I wonder if I can get this pile done in a half hour or if I can get this, you know, this row of logs here cut up in an hour, whatever it is. So that's kind of what I do. Um, the next thing is use your time right, which means start early and quit watching TV, quit watching sports, quit watching other people do stuff. You can watch me, though, if you want. That's fine. Um, I find the stuff I watch is because I want to learn something from someone else, how they're doing it more, efficient, more efficiently or better, being more productive. And what I want to find out from them is what I could improve on. But I don't waste my time watching other people do sports or other people act and, you know, doing things that aren't real anyway. Um, so I do it myself. I've always been more of a doer than a watcher. And that's kind of how I look at it. Um, the next thing you can do is always be looking for more wood to cut. Always. I look constantly where there's might be some wood available to cut or ask people if they've got trees that I can cut. If I see some something that you know, needs to be cut down or if somebody's got something they want to get rid of. I'm always buying more logs thinking where could I squeeze more in? Because I've always sold everything that I have. So it just works. And when it comes to buying logs, what you're basically doing is you're being more productive because you're basically hiring someone to cut the trees down, to load them onto a, a, a semi-trailer, and then load, haul them to you, and then deliver them to me. And I have found that, like this log pile you're looking at right now, I have found that by cutting log piles that I buy, per hour I actually make more money than if I go cut wood or trees down in the woods, load them up, haul them home, unload them, then split them. By having a big pile like that, it's a lot of work I can get done all at one time. So that's kind of what I've been doing is just working on the log piles that I have. So those are things that are, are real important to just keep always be looking. Um, and the next thing is keep your saws sharp all the time. If you notice when you're cutting they're starting to get dull, quit cutting, grab a different saw, put a different chain on, or sharpen your saws. I I don't waste time if my saws get dull. If I hit the ground even on my first or second cut, of course I get a little upset, but I put it down and I grab another saw and then I start cutting. By having multiple saws it really helps my efficiency because I'm able to cut until a saw is either dull or out of gas. Grab another saw. Cut until that saw is out of gas or it's dull. Grab another saw. I actually have five saws, but I, three of them is what I use most of the time. But I'm going to get another one or two just because I don't want to ever be shut down to where I can't cut. I want to always have equipment that's working. So when I'm done cutting at the end of the day, I sharpen my saws. 99% of the time because when I have to cut again I want to be ready. I don't want to have to take time in the morning before I'm going to cut and a day I got planned to cut all day to sharpen the saws. I want to know they're just ready to go. And if a job comes up where somebody says hey I've got these trees I'm cutting down tomorrow or my neighbor's got a tree he wants cut down. Do you want it? 
but they got to get rid of it. And I've had jobs where, like in commercial property, where they want the trees gone now, like that day or the next day, and I'm able to go in and get it right away because my gear is ready. Um, and when I'm cutting, if, like I said before, if my saw gets dull, I either grab another saw or I sharpen all of them or I put a sharp chain on and go back to work. Um, by using multiple saws, I am able to just keep working. Plus, a lot of people don't realize this, it's a lot better for your saws to not be overworked and to actually let them cool down between cutting. Um, another thing you got to make sure is make sure you've got your gas and your oil and that you're ready to go and have spare chains in case something happens. I have spare bars in case something happens. I have spare park plugs, spark plugs. I have spare um, nuts for holding the bar in place. I have spares of all the stuff I'm going to need so that I'm ready to go each day. And I would say the number one thing out of all the things I mentioned is having your mind right. To not be afraid of what's in front of you. And just putting your nose to the grindstone, so to speak, and doing the work. If you're going to look at it and think to yourself, man, that looks like a lot of work, you're not going to go too far. So I think that's very important, to just not be afraid of the work and just attack it and go at it you know, with the attitude that you're going you're gonna to do more than you thought you could do. That's kind of the way I look at it. Um, and I try to make sure I eat right and sleep right because that helps a lot. If I know i got a big day coming, I get to bed early the night before and I make sure I eat a lot and stay hydrated. So now we're just going to do, do some regular talking here. So I'm over on this load of wood that I just got in a couple days ago. It's all maple. And um, it was fresh cut just in the last like week or two. And it's toward the end of winter now, springtime. And all of this wood was green wood cut. And I'm looking over here and I see it dripping, thinking, oh, the snow's melting off. And it dawned to me, there's no snow melting off of this. All these are dripping because the sap is running out of them. They're all, all the water's coming off the ends and they're actually dripping um, sap out from the, the cut logs here. So all these wet ones that you see, they're all dripping. And there's a lot of dripping going on. It's, uh, it's all sap running. That's pretty cool. So they're drying as we speak. We're losing pounds and pounds a day, I'm sure, just of the pile sitting here in the sun. So that's kind of cool. Thanks for watching today. Hopefully you learned something. Between now and tomorrow when you watch again, get out in the woods, get cutting. Good night, Irene.